Don't worry, I heard you loud and clear. Anyway, Avatar The Legend of the Last Angbender is a story all about heroism and valor and conquering insurmountable odds against a truly powerful enemy. What well, happens if we shift the perspective, not from the protagonist or even the antagonist, and instead focus on a humble cabbage merchant? Because trust me, is pretty crazy. And this work is largely based off of the theory by Alex Bale in the style of Mugiwara no Goofy, because you know, I thought this would be fun. Anyway, think about it like this. You are the cabbage merchant, also known as Kai or Sai. You are an honest trader of the Earth Kingdom. And all you've ever wanted to do in your life is sell cabbages. It's humble and it's honest work and it still pays the bills and you need to provide for your family so you travel the world trying to sell cabbages wherever you can. Now your cabbages are not the best in the world but they're not the worst either and in a place where people can kill you telepathically with a rock or set you on fire from 20 feet away or even strangulate you through waving their hands in the air Settling for not the worst is pretty okay. And plus, you love these cabbages like they're your children. Sometimes you even name them. But one day you're traveling to Amashu because you heard that people from Amashu are the friendliest and nicest and caring people in the entire world. And naturally you think that's a good place to set up shop for a little bit. But you get to the gate and the guard inspects your cabbages and calls them rotten. Rotten! How dare he? The audacity! They're not rotten. I'm sure they might be a little bit slimy but they're not rotten are they and even if he did have these horrible feelings about your cabbages why did he have to chuck your cart into the chasm the cart was just as expensive as the goddamn cabbages were but anyway dejected and defeated you go down to see what you can recover from your now destroyed cart and you actually find a secret tunnel into a mushroom which is pretty handy so instead of going the honest way around you find another cart fill it with cabbages and sneak in under the tunnel and start selling your cabbages completely undetected. And you know, the day's going well, you're selling cabbages, you're doing, you're doing pretty well. You might just be able to recover your losses from the morning, but who's to say? A few minutes later as you're slowly starting to relax after the events of the morning, a stone cart falls from the sky and takes your cabbage cart out. This cart holds a boy with pointy arrow tattoos and two people that look like they came from a water tribe of some description. Either way, you want them to pay for it because this is ridiculous. Like this is completely absurd. How do people fall from the sky and directly hit your cabbage? It's literally the worst day anyone could ever have. So you get the guards and you drag them off to see King Boomy, hoping that you're gonna get either financial recompensation or maybe they get executed, you know. It could, either way you're happy, but instead you get neither. King Boomy instead throws them a goddamn feast. These people that just came into your city, destroyed your second cabbage cart of the day, and he throws them a goddamn feast? Are you joking right now? How is that even possible? The You leave the throne room, you are angry. You feel like you have been let down by your kingdom and your king. So what do you do? Well, somehow you had just enough money from these two mishaps to actually get another cabbage cart together by some miracle and so you set up shop and again the day's going pretty well but a few hours later another cart falls from the sky and hits your cabbages again but this time it's not just the boy with the tattoos no it's the king of omashu himself along with the boy they just scamper up they don't even entertain the idea anymore and you are left without any cabbages any money you are financially ruined so you leave omashu as you're traveling the earth kingdom you are feeling really heartbroken because you know your kingdom has let you down completely. You have now been thrown into hard times. How can you go back to your family? You've now lost all of your life savings. All of three carts, three shipments of cabbages, gone in an instant by the same people, essentially, by Earth Kingdom guards, by a boy with blue arrow tattoos, and by your king. Your king looked the other way twice when your cabbages were destroyed. But you managed to 
move through the Earth Kingdom, you scrape together just a little bit more money, just a little bit more, one more for one more shipment of cabbages. These are your real babies. These are the, your pride and joy. These are the ones that are going to save your life. And you go to another city and you start your day and you haven't had any mishaps for a little bit. So you're feeling okay. You've got these cabbages, they're all set up. You're ready to go. And another cabbage car gets destroyed and you look and you see it's the same kid in Omashu, the boy with the blue tattoos and you feel angry you feel cheated he has now taken everything from you you just managed to get this cart together and now it's over so again you start wandering the earth kingdom you take to drinking you take to gambling trying to recover any semblance of anything in your life you can't go back to your family you are completely ruined and then you find out the boy with the blue tattoos isn't just a normal kid it's the avatar the avatar has caused all of this pain in your life the person who's supposed to bring balance to this world has only caused you suffering and so you start to harbor resentment to the whole system you start talking to yourself as you're walking around and then one day someone comes up to you and says i heard you mumbling about something about a boy with blue arrow tattoos did you mean the avatar huh what oh curse him and everything the earth kingdom stands for curse him you say yes curse him and the earth kingdom they've taken everything from me they've ruined me i was a reasonably successful cabbage merchant at one point in time and now that dream is gone my sweet cabbages poor geraldine poor frank petunia they were taken from me destroyed by the avatar is that so then i might be able to help you with what? I can get you revenge for your fallen cabbages and on the Avatar and on the Earth Kingdom and also a little bit of financial recompensation for yourself, for your troubles of course. Really? You would do that for a stranger? Why? We just need you to do a little job for us. A job for your rather unusual skill set. I am just a humble cabbage merchant. What skill set could I have? And what job could you possibly need me for? We want you to sneak a cabbage slug into Barsing, say. What? No, that would destroy the entire ecosystem. Don't you want to get revenge on these people that have treated you so poorly through the years? Don't you want to take control back in your life and have money and finally be the person you are supposed to be? Don't you want rightful retribution for all of the atrocities that they have committed against you? And you think about it. I mean, what have you got left to lose? You look down at your clothes, you're covered in piss and beer, and you're still holding a bottle of whiskey. This is maybe your chance for redemption, or at least to take down some of the people that have caused you so much misery in this life. So, you agree. The person then hands you a bag of coins and says, this is for the new cabbage cart, and a little something extra just so you can survive. And you get double that when you finish the job, and I will meet you in Ba Sing Se. Uh, okay. And the person gets up and leaves, and you're left wondering, can you really do this? Can you really betray the Avatar and the Earth Kingdom? They have hurt you so much, but now you are holding this money, you start to feel that maybe, maybe this is the wrong action to take. You are doing unspeakable things, but then you think, with double this money, maybe I could set up a cabbage restaurant or even have a cabbage fleet of carts. And if I lose one to the Avatar, maybe it won't be a problem. And so you think about it and you think, I could take this money and be okay, or I can do this job and be really good. And you opt for the latter. So you go and buy another cart of cabbage and you head to Ba Sing Se. You fight the nerves as you walk up to the check-in desk and the woman eyes you up and down and she's just like, no vegetables in Ba Sing Se. Hang on, what? No vegetables in Ba Sing Se. If you bring a slug in, it will destroy the ecosystem. Don't you know that? And you watch as your car gets taken away and destroyed by a platypus bear. They even eat your cabbages and you see the slug that was going to be your savior fly out of the cabbage car and you're traumatized. You are now completely ruined what are you gonna do how can you now go and face that person how can you now go to Ba Sing Se but you still have to go maybe there's a way to fix this with the person maybe they can still help you you go into Ba Sing Se anyway and you try to meet with that person and you pay for a couple of nights with the money that you have left over why didn't they tell you where to meet this was a really big oversight they should have said something and so you wander aimlessly until one day you're sat at a fountain and you're just looking at the coins that people toss in to for good fortune 
fortune and someone comes up behind you and says, the cabbages? Gone. Pity, they say as they uh, get up and leave. No, please don't. I need money. I'd do anything, anything. They turn around to look at your groveling face. Anything? A anything. I need information about the Avatar or the Earth Kingdom cities. Anything you can give me and I'm willing to pay top dollar if anything becomes fruitful. Uh, I can do that. What do you have? So you think you, you try and wrap your head about anything that might be useful to this person and you remember that secret tunnel down back in Amashu and you just think, oh, maybe, maybe that's helpful to them. But you also remember all of the things that you saw about the Avatar and you relay all that information. But then you tell them about the secret tunnel and that piques their interest. Secret tunnel, you say? interesting you've been most helpful and they leave and give you another pouch of coins more than double of the previous coins that you have and now you've just gone from financial destitution to being well off this is more money than you would make in a year but there is an element of guilt there so you think maybe you can just become another humble cabbage merchant there is a distinct lack of locally sourced cabbages in Basing say and that's where you find a corner in the market because all of the other cabbages that come from outside the city walls are small and kind of rotten so, so you start setting up a little small business, more cabbages, all locally sourced in Basing Se. And that works for a little while, you live an honest day's work, you slowly start to accumulate a little bit of money, but you don't touch any of that pouch of gold. You want to save that for a rainy day, just in the off chance. And then one day, the avatar shows up again, and this time he's being followed by a shitload of animals. And guess what? They destroy your cabbage cart, and you... I mean, you tried to make an honest day's work and again, the avatar has just come and destroyed it. It's like some kind of cosmic thing, some kind of cruel joke that these creators are playing on you. You are suffering endlessly at the hands of this boy. And as you watch, as an animal eats your cabbages, you just say, oh, forget it. You've got enough money now that you don't need to worry about anything like that. You have enough money to go and live a comfortable life. And maybe this job isn't for you. Maybe you're not supposed to be a cabbage merchant. It breaks your heart because you love these cabbages again like they're your children. So, but you think, well, selling information gave me all of this money in the first place. Maybe I can try and find that person again. So you go back to that fountain and you wait for days, for weeks actually, until eventually. Hello. Oh, hello. It's good to see you again. I've been waiting for so long. Your uh, intel on a marshu was quite invaluable. They say as they hand you a fat bag of coins, a truly unimaginable amount of gold. And with that, you can retire happily. But then you remember Omashu was just taken by the Fire Nation and is now under their control. Without you, we could not have taken the city. You feel sick. You wanted vengeance. You didn't want to overthrow your own kingdom. You've had a direct hand in the Earth Kingdom's loss in this war so far. And this, this is just wrong. You also heard that the Avatar died. And now it looks like the Fire Nation is going to take over the world. And this is all your fault. I need you to come with me. Why? The Fire Nation is your insights into the Avatar to create a play that demonstrates the glory of the Fire Nation and how it killed the Avatar. The Avatar really is dead. Yes. Because of me? No, because of Prince Zuko, you fool. Well, what else do you have to lose? I mean, the Fire Nation has taken over the world and I mean, like, at least this way you can rub shoulders with the elite and have a stable future without having to worry about the Fire Nation potentially killing you or taking your business. At least this way you are a perceived ally to the now rulers of the world. And by all metrics, the, the player's a success. It's a bit Peter Panny, but hey, that's all right. And it still beats the the play that was directed by the other guy. That was terrible. And so with that, when the play finished, the Fire Nation has no longer any need for you. And so you go back to Ba Sing Se. But what ends up happening is the Fire Nation actually loses the war and you start to feel panicked because now you have a shitload of Fire Nation coins that have been acquired through rather illegitimate means and are now probably pretty suspect. Obviously you don't want to lose your whole life over this, like you just did what you did to survive. So you buy a cabbage stand. This way you can start buying your own cabbages with the, the rather illegal money and then that way you can legitimize it in the future and you can just slowly, slowly get that money into your pocket in a, in a very clean way. It's almost like you laundered it in a laundromat and one day you see a lemur 
dance across your car and you're like, oh no, the avatar's back. He's here. He's going to destroy my cabbages again. It's not the avatar who shows up. It's actually Prince Zuko, the guy that supposedly killed the avatar and then turned into the new Fire Lord or something. It's all very confusing. You don't pay attention to the political messes anymore. You're trying to keep your nose clean. Uh, Kai, how did you know my name? Don't worry about that. Have you come to, you know, from... No, no. <laughs> I heard about all of the misfortunes and the tragedies that occurred to you when the Avatar was a kid. And I thought I could come and make it up to you for everything that he's ever done to you. And whatever you've done in the past as a consequence of those actions, Let's just say I understand, and you are absolved of any crimes that you might have committed. Everything that happened to you was just a tragedy, and I've come to make peace with that. Peace? I'm going to buy all of your cabbages, and then I want you to meet me at the Jasmine Dragon Tea House for a feast of cabbage. That's not really necessary, my lord. Oh, nonsense. We're just going to hold a feast. It's okay. The Avatar will be there as well. The Avatar? Oh, oh god. You go to the tea house and you meet the Avatar, Iroh, the Fire Nation King's brother, guy that besieged Ba Sing Se, as well as Katara, the water bending master. It's all, all of these famous people. Even Toph is there. The legend of the Earth Kingdom, the blind bandit that can manipulate metal and was represented as a really buff dude in that play, which was really weird, but I guess it's like to do with the Fire Nation's insecurities about having to lose to a little girl that can't see. And you feel guilty because you are surrounded by these literal heroes of this world and you're just a cabbage merchant that sold out the kingdom. There was one guy that had a boomerang, but you avoided him because he mentioned something about the Fire Nation plague and how a cabbage merchant gave information. You throw this feast and you have a great time with these people and you think, okay, maybe the Avatar wasn't such a bad guy, but that doesn't appease your guilt. In fact, that makes you feel worse because now you feel that you really did a disservice to the entirety of the Earth Kingdom. So after the feast, you decide you're done with cabbage stands. You're done with basing. So you need a fresh start. You need to go somewhere else where you can live peacefully you set to on Cranefish Town, and rather than having cabbage stands, you open up a cabbage style restaurant. And in that restaurant, you create a wonderful place, wonderful environment for your kids and your family to be happy. But then one day the avatar turns up and you're just like, okay, every time the avatar turns up, some kind of misfortune falls upon you. And yes, that's exactly what happens. You're forced to evacuate the town, not through your own choice, but Katara was incredibly convincing. And you need to leave your restaurant and your cabbages to its demise and you feel guilty and heartbroken again as if the cycle just repeats itself and these creators all they want to do is make you suffer but that's when something curious happens there's a, a technological revolution that's happening and one of your friends drives past you in a forklift something you've never seen before, something you didn't even think was a conceivable reality until people started using lightning bending to power stuff. And you look at that and you're like, wow, technology is the key to the future. And to make amends for all of the tragic things that you've done, you start to dedicate your life to the idea of technology. So you go back to the ruins of your restaurant and you dig out your old coins from the rubble and you still have a fair chunk and you take them to you know, a disreputable source. And he's willing to pay 10 times what they were originally worth, giving you an absolutely astronomical sum, turning you into one of the richest people, not just in the Earth Kingdom, but in the entire world. And you use that money to create your own airships, to create your own technological empire. And for the rest of your life, that's all you care about. But it's a shame that you don't live long enough to see the heights that your technology gets to. And by doing this, maybe you can hopefully make up the pain that you caused the Earth Kingdom and for helping and abating that horrible point in the world's history. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like. Tell me, what do you think of the Cabbage Merchant? But other than that, I want to thank my members. Lavender, Yuri, and Alan, especially Alan. Um, if you want to join them, link is in the description. Thank you. Have a great day and have a great life. It's more than my fragile heart can stand.